Okay, and now we're just gonna have a brief 15 second display, delay, excuse me, while Facebook streams us over. And it looks like we are live. Welcome, mighty mystery fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am thrilled to present our featured celebrity guest tonight, Jane Harper, streaming all the way live from Australia today. And she's gonna tell us all about her brand new book, which drops tomorrow, but you heard it here first, The Survivors. Jane, welcome to Mighty Mysteries. Tell us about your book. Hi, hi Sarah, hi everybody. Thanks so much for um, having me here today. Um, yeah, so The Survivors is out in the US tomorrow. And um, yeah, I really loved writing this book. It was a lot of fun. It's, a, it's another Australian mystery, which is what I do. Um, it's set this time in um, along kind of the rugged coastline of Tasmania, which is a really small island state here in Australia. And it's set in a, a kind of a, um, a, a, a tiny community. So there's lots of small town intrigue and secrets to be uncovered. And it centers around the main character, a guy called Kieran Elliott, who is a young, a young dad who returns to this hometown of his to help his aging parents. Um, and he's barely arrived, barely had time to kind of brush the sand off his boots when a body is discovered on the beach. Ooh. Well, I have been <laughs> devouring this book, Jane, and I absolutely love it as I love all of your books. So I can't wait to get into every single juicy tidbit of it. Um, but first, I just want to welcome all of our mystery fans on Facebook. Welcome, everybody. If you've been here before, you know how it goes. And if you're new, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. And here's how it goes. This is your chance to have access to our featured celebrity author, Jane Harper. And you can ask Jane anything you want about her brand new book, about any of her books, about her writing process. My partner in crime, pun intended, Kimberly, is managing things on on Facebook, so she'll get your questions. We'll be monitoring them. So just type them right in the comment box and I'll get them right over to Jane. Um, I wanna welcome Kathy. Gail says, hi, Sarah. Hi, Jane, happy snowstorm. Welcome, Patty. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome, Gail. Welcome, Andrea. Welcome, everybody. We're so happy to have you. I know it always takes me a moment to think of questions. So while you're thinking, of my, while you're firing up those questions, I have got to share a few words of praise because you guys, Jane has hit it out of the park. My God, the reviews are amazing. She has earned rave reviews from the New York Times, the New York Times Book Review, the Washington Post, Kirkus and Booklist, both awarding the book a starred review. Booklist raving the latest stunner from Jane Harper. She expertly raises the reader's pulse throughout the narrative, insinuating what happened that day, but only revealing the truth slowly as Kieran comes to see past and present in a new light. I can attest that my pulse was racing Kirkus, which the New York Times called uh, reliably cranky and cantankerous, I think. Their praise don't come cheap. Set calls Harper an, art, an author at the top of her game. Wow, amazing. Real Simple Magazine says Harper writes with precision and creates a tense atmosphere on the brink of combustion. Yes, she does. I can tell you. I could go on and on, um, but let's get right into it. I'm going to mention some more um, as we go, but Jean, Tell us, how do you write a book? What are your secrets to writing a book that earns this kind of praise? Oh, you know, gosh, thank you so much for reading all this. <laughs> that was a, that's a great way to start my morning, I have to say. Um, so for me, look, my writing process, um, the, the first thing I would say to people who are maybe trying to write their own book is that I think there's no one way to do it. And I know you hear that a lot, but I think whatever whatever works for you to get those words on the page is the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the way that I do it is um, I'm a big planner. Um, I do that, I think, because I used to be a, a print journalist and I'm kind of, I'm quite, um, it, it's quite important to me, I think, to not overwrite. Like, I don't like to write words that I'm later going to have to delete. So I, I tend to really plan really, really um, yeah, extensively. Mm -hmm. So that when I actually come to write the book, I'm really sure about what, what elements are going to go in and what the whole thing looks like. So I, I would plan the whole thing from start to finish. And then I would kind of drill down into specific sections to the point where when I start to write it I actually have yeah, a chapter by chapter layout and I know exactly what's happened what the true story is what the red herrings are what I hope the readers are going to think um, and then I do a lot of on the ground research as well which you know hopefully adds to the kind of you know the setting and, and makes it give that kind of authentic feel I think. Fantastic. And the Washington Post also raving um, about this book and specifically mentioning your ability to talk about setting, saying place is paramount, a multifaceted character that is in turns brutal and breathtaking. 
Yes, I totally agree because as I was reading this book, which as you said, takes place in Tasmania, you capture it as you capture all of the settings in your book, whether it's the outback um, or you know any part of Australia, even the cities, you capture them so perfectly and having lived in Australia, it brings me back and I love that. So how do you make the setting a character? As the Washington Post said, a multifaceted character. How do you do that? Yeah, it starts really early on, I think, when I'm, I'm planning the book, I, I think yeah, immediately I'm thinking about what, what setting am I going to set, yeah, use? Because um, mm-hmm. I want a setting that's going to support the plot. So yeah. um, I might have a few different options because I want um, really the setting to be woven through the novel. I don't just want it to be a backdrop. I want it to be something that um, kind of drives the action and it um, informs who the characters have become in terms of, um, what their their lives are like growing up, what their opportunities are now, like jobs, relationships, mm. you know, the kind of the, maybe the pressures they have with their families. Because um, a lot of those things are, I think, dictated by our environment, you know. Um, so, I, so firstly, I think quite hard about what setting is the best one to support this plot. Mm. And then um, as part of that, I also, um, I do a lot of research when I'm planning and drafting. And then um, when I've got the story kind of where I know what's going to happen, I then go and do like a big kind of on the ground research trip where I, mm. I, I, have, I know what gaps I need to fill in and, I, and then I always learn other things so I can still change the book enough to, to weave in those new things I discover. So, for example, in, in, in The Survivors, there's a, um, uh, Tasmania has um, like a thousand shipwrecks, literally like a thousand shipwrecks around this, in its waters. So it's this kind of shipwreck graveyard. Um, and mm. there's lots of like diving opportunities around it. So I wanted to include that. So I thought oh, that was a really fun element. You know, you, you can't sort of go past that element to, in, to have a, in a book, I think. And, um, but I don't know anything about diving. So I, I went out there and I, I went diving in these kind of freezing Tasmanian waters and um, sort of got the experience of what that was like and, you know, the sounds and the, the feeling on your body and the, the equipment you needed, things like that, which I think um, all help to, to kind of... Um, yeah, I guess, you yeah, know, bring it, you yeah, make it feel real for the readers. Yes, yes. And I love how you do that in this book with Tasmania, um, in Forces of Nature with the Outback. I mean, it was the, char- the, the setting becomes this other character where you are kind of afraid of them like you know because because you know for instance in forces of nature the outback is dangerous in tasmania the the water um the caves the the tides the 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 the, the shifting elements of nature i mean it it it, it, pre- it presents as you, because you craft it so expertly um, as another element of suspense, another element of danger, something that is, as uh, as your reviews have said, raising our pulses. So, and you do it so brilliantly. Oh my gosh, questions are pouring in, so I want to get over to them. Um, oh my goodness, yay! I love I, I love all these. Oh, we're getting tons of hearts, yay! Hearts and likes for for Jane. And this is Joy, a top uh, community member, says she can't wait to read this book. Sharon says I've heard a lot about this book. I'm anxious to check it out. Um, welcome, Sunny. Sully says I love. Love your books, especially The Lost Man. All your books are so different, which seems unusual because so many authors write the same kind of books. Where do you find your stories? Um, Steve, sign Steve. I can't wait to read The Survivors. I pre-order it and I'm anxiously waiting to get my copy. Yay. So Jane, tell us, where do you um, get your, where do you get these ideas? Yeah, look, so um, I'm not one of these authors who has, you know, 20 ideas on the go. Um, <laughs> you know, I, like I wish I, I wish I were, but um uh, the way it works for me is I um, I have kind of one I have one idea and then I, I will work it up and I'll spend a long time like layering it and working out if it's got enough avenues to sort of su- yeah, sustain it over 90,000 words and if it's going to have enough kind of opportunity for like the red herrings and in this direction and um, and so for me that the plot always comes first and then I, I think about the characters and the setting I need to tell tell that you know idea in the best possible way so that's why sometimes the first two books had Aaron Fork who was a uh, a federal investigator and then the the lost man and the survivors are both standalones because I I knew um I needed some certain characters to tell the books yeah as best as I could mm. um and I and I do like to um for me I think having a bit of diversity in the the, the setting and the kind of the I guess the the nature of yeah, the, like the characters and the um the books um for me it's it's um it's just something I'm more drawn to as an author. I, I think, you know, I, I think I actually would, would struggle more to write a series which was the same character doing the same thing 
time and time again I think that's really hard to keep that fresh some people do it really well I'm not sure that's for me though so um you know and Australia is such a it's such a huge diverse country there's so many different opportunities to, to, to yeah, set a book in a really interesting place um so that that's kind of why I try and like mix it up a little bit but hopefully I think also the books have a, a similar kind of tone and feel though so I think if you yes. if you hopefully if you like if you like one you'll like you like the others as well I feel they for me for me as an author I feel they all kind of strike the same kind of note just in a, a different way they do but you could cover up your name on the cover and it would still have the feeling of a Jane Harbour book even though the subject matter the cast of characters is also different somehow it all feels like you which we all love oh good <laughs> um Dara says so excited to read their survivors welcome Geraldine welcome Jane um, and as I said, since you are a planner, have you ever had a book go another way and it became very different than your outline? And this, I was going to ask that. I love that question. Yeah, look, you know, it, it does. Because some, um, I think, again, sometimes when people uh, are writing their own books, they, they, some people don't like to plan. And I think, from what I hear, I think it's because people feel it, it sort of, um, it, it's not, it takes away the creativity. But for me, um, I actually find it, it allows me to be more creative because I can try lots of different things without committing to 50,000 words you know like I mean it can take months and months to write tens of thousands of words whereas if I'm kind of doing a plan you know I could try out 10 different things in the morning you know and see what fits and and so yeah quite often certainly in the planning stages like often um the book will take you know it's like serious changes of direction and and I feel that gives me like a certain freedom to kind of see where that goes and see what that looks like um and then quite often again even despite having done these extensive sort of planning and I'll do a, a full first draft and it's funny because um although in, in the plan I felt that was exactly what it needed to be when you see it kind of laid out sometimes seeing as a whole then sparks new ideas which means then I'll kind of go back to the start and I will like rewrite I'll have to kind of rewrite whole sections if not the whole thing to kind of weave in new ideas and, and I now I sort of I sort of expect that and accept that as part of the process because I think if I didn't do that first stage I wouldn't necessarily have had this better idea I, that may never have come so I I, I see that as, as a positive but absolutely I think um for me it like so much of it is trial and error it's not just a big lightning strike of the whole idea it's you know does this work does this work better what if I swap this what if I start it here instead so it's a lot of it is just yeah you know, seeing what seeing what works really Oh, I love that. And Jean, without giving any spoilers away, can you tell us um, either about this book or if, it, or if it would involve a spoiler, um, one of your other books of something that you planned and then uh, to, you know, to Anissa's point, it, it, the characters took you another way. They said no. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like, a, I mean, I'll use this book and um, I'll use the survivors as an example. Um, and um you know without uh, yeah, spoiler free because i know a lot of you won't have had a chance to read it yet but for example i mean one of the big things that changes um and and through all the books we did with this one as well is um working out um the characters um kind of relationships and who they have around them so very often there'll be um because I, I like all the characters to they all need to do heavy lifting you know I can't just have characters there for the sake of it they all have to bring something to the story and that's something that only really becomes clear I think as I'm planning it so often I'll have someone who starts off maybe you know they'll be um you know um 40 with you know a wife and three kids and then by the end of the planning process they'll be 18 and single or you know or something or, yeah. or they'll be they'll be you know they'll be a man and they'll become a woman or you, you know or they'll they'll sort of be have grown up in the, that town or and they'll they'll change and become a complete you know someone new you know so it, it quite often um that the characters really change and I mean I don't tend to lock them in too early like I, I won't name them I don't kind of go into complicated descriptions I literally have them as very two-dimensional for a long time so you know like best friends, girlfriend, mum, you know, and, and that's what they'll be called for like, honestly, like two whole drafts or something, because I like to keep it fluid enough that they can become who they need to be. So that, that's how I approach it anyway. 
Wow, that is fascinating. And to your point, what you just said that you don't have characters unless they're all have the, the, just for the sake of having a character, they're all doing heavy lifting. The New York Times praised your ability to do that and said, Ms. Harper is not one to drop a fact without using it later. If you enjoy being hoodwinked, who doesn't? You'll love her sleight of hand. Ms. Harper has made her own major mark. They went, uh, the New York Times book review said, as always, Harper skillfully evokes the landscape as she weaves a complicated, elegant web full of long buried secrets ready to come to light. Again, attesting to your ability to do this magical weaving. Um, and it's so great to, to give us the glimpse behind your curtain. So thank you. Um, Andrea said, did you get to pick who narrated the audiobook? I had an advanced listen and I loved it. Yeah, tell us about the voice. Oh, yeah, gosh, yeah, the narrator. So his name is Steve Shanahan and he is the best guy. Like he's, um, so so first, so he was chosen um, by the, um, the the audiobook publishers for the first book. They sent me a couple of samples of, um, he's an Australian actor um, and he, they sent me a couple of you know, samples and and he sounded, he sounded good, you know, I was like, sure, that sounds great. And then he completely smashed it out of the park he, he did such an amazing job um on the dry which is my debut novel that then we've we've got him every time since um because and you know what people people rave about the audiobooks and I, I think rightly because he he really brings something special to him like he you know, he completely um yeah, he, he really, sort of, I think, brings them to life. He gives them like a kind of a real sort of fresh feel. He does, mm. he kind of differentiates the characters without, you know, doing silly voices or anything. He just kind of makes it very clear and, he, and I think he gives them a bit of personality. Um, so I actually got to go up and see him um, for the, the last book, the, lost, the, the third book, The Lost Man. I got to go up and um, see him recording in the studio. And um, so it was really, yeah, it was really fun. Like, he's a really great guy. I hope, I hope he'll continue to... To do the books you know ongoing really because um i always get like a really great response when when he does it oh that's so cool and speaking of actors eric banna stars in the major motion picture adaptation yeah. of jane's book the dry amazing amazing we love these behind the scenes glimpses. thank you so much Edwin, one of our authors a couple of weeks ago, Edwin Hill says, yay, I'm so excited for this. Edwin, welcome back. Good to see you. He said, thank you for this. Um, welcome, Teresa. Edwin says, gosh, maybe this has already been asked, but does Jane approach her standalones in a different way than her series novels? Edwin asked them a good question. Like I'm laying off her Yeah. Um, so um, I, I guess kind of yes in that each time each time I've written a book I've learned something new about the process so each time my writing process has refined a little bit um so um for this one particularly um you, you know I, I I know I know kind of what works for me in terms of I know kind of having a lot of good sort of thinking time and then planning and then really drilling into that plan and then only writing when I'm actually at that point I know that works for me so that was a really quite streamlined process um and I think that's you know, and then next one I'll, have, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably um, be able to streamline that even further, you know, and get to the creative stuff a lot faster because I can do that practical stuff, you know, um, without really having to worry about what I need to do now, I guess. Um, and then the thing, the, the biggest difference, I guess, between a standalone and one which features Aaron Falk, which, um, as you said, has, you know, now being made to film with Eric Banner, which is amazing, yeah. Um, I think it's, it's always about, um, you know, it's always about finding the right characters for the story. Like I was saying that um, the reason, so with a standalone, you have a bit more freedom, I guess. You can, you can really make the, the characters who you, they need to be for that story. Whereas with um, Aaron Fork, who I am considering um, quite strongly actually returning for the next one, um, although I haven't hundred percent committed, but that is what I'm kind of working on at the moment. It's more about, because he's a set character, you, it's then about building the, um, finding a story that would be a good vehicle for him and really let him shine and be a good fit for his character so you it's a slightly different avenue into the, the book I guess um and um but yeah but I mean I've got a good idea that I feel is like really really well suited for him and would be a good fit for his character and I think has all those sort of ticks all those boxes I'm looking for like it has enough kind of mystery and intrigue and it would it would be um, I think really sort of in keeping with the other books. And um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm leaning towards now. I love that. And I love how you also will share 
um, bits of his backstory so that we continue to learn about him actually and view him in a different way or you know sort of enriching his character arc. I love him so I think that I, I uh, so I love how you how you do that when you do write about oh, him. Thanks. Yeah, and I think that's it. I mean, that's another different when you've, you've got a, a character who occurs because um, I think it's also you've got to kind of walk that line between you know, knowing there will be some readers who have maybe just come to that one completely fresh and, and need, you know, need a bit of um, introduction. And then there's others who have, you know, read the, possibly even read the ones in like the past, you know, they've read them back to back to back, you know, if they've already just discovered the, the books. So, so they don't need a lot of, they don't want you to kind of, you know, devote chapters to kind of rehashing things so it's um so again it's, it's like it's trial and error it's about finding that that right balance and I think that's just sort of you just have kind of have to feel your way a little bit with that oh I love that answer thank you so much Jane and thank you Edwin Hill for the question Edwin of course is this uh very well regarded acclaimed author of the Hester Thursby series the Harvard librarian I love her um uh welcome Catherine she says, congratulations on the new release. Our co-founder, Jenna Blum, tuning in. New York Times bestselling author, Jenna Blum, she said, I'm not a huge thriller reader, but these interviews are changing my mind, and I love the behind the scenes on writing process. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, welcome, Marilyn. Jennifer would like to know, so what book are you reading right now, Jane Harper? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, so um, I'm actually reading, so it's something that the, the back catalog, um, a um a book called a thousand splendid sons who oh, by the author his name i'm sorry it's complete but he also wrote the kite runner yes. um and um, i've had this thank you yes and I've, I've been i've had this book on my shelf for years um and you know and and i think and i love the kite runner and i said i don't know why it's taking me so long to pick it up but i'm completely gripped i can't like i can't put it down i love um you know it's set in kind of wartime um afghanistan um and you know it's so it, it's so fascinating i think to see I, th I think that is actually a really perfect example of the way um, setting, yes, yeah, setting is kind of woven into the plot without dominating it because you've got this amazing sort of fascinating setting that's really driving the characters and, and, and shaping their lives and their experiences. But as a reader, you're, it's being sort of drip fed to you in a way that every page you're like, my goodness, wow, you know, and, and you're learning from it without feeling like you're being beaten around the head with it, which is exactly the kind of, I think the perfect sort of um, note to strike with that that kind of mix. Yes, and those books broke my heart. I mean, I was a, a sobbing, broken-hearted mess on the couch. I mean, they're so beautiful mm. and they're so painful. Um, and and you're right. And I love that. Of course, you're talking about about setting as character, location as character, because that's what you do so brilliantly, and that, and also that's what he does so brilliantly. So that makes sense that that, that you're that resonates with you. I love that. Uh, Jenna, Jenna's saying she could listen to you all night, Jane. I know, me too. There's <laughs> nothing better than an Australian uh, speaking her wisdom and her beautiful accent. Um, we had some questions come in that were submitted in advance. I want to make sure to get to those. The first from Dr. Helen Clady, um, who's actually a dear friend of mine and the pro vice chancellor of graduate research and development at QUT, that's Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane. She said, you have carved out a niche as an Australian crime writer who uses the unique and diverse landscapes of, the, of this country and its desolate isolation as a canvas for fear. Ooh, Helen, you're a poet. She said, can you talk about your attraction to using place and landscape as almost characters in your book, particularly as Australia itself has one of the lowest murder rates in the world and 90% live in urban areas. That's true. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I think, um, and, and, you know, and it's, um, it sounds like um, she, a lot of people know, I, I write, uh, my books are quite often set in sort of, well, are set really in, in more isolated regions. So I don't, I haven't seen any of them so far in, in the cities. Um, they've all been in kind of small communities or the outback or, um, you know, bushland. So, so where the characters are, are really sort of cut off. And um, I, mm -hmm. I, I do that. I think I'm drawn to those locations for, for sort of, I guess, two main reasons. And um, the first one is like the creative aspect, which I think I just, I just really like the locations. I think they, they bring something beautiful to the story. Um, like I said before, I like the way they, they kind of, um, they give the characters experiences that you, you don't find maybe in other, other settings, you know, that makes them like unique to themselves really. Um, 
And um, I think it's just a real gift for Australian writers and it's a lot of fun to kind of explore and visit them and then, then kind of bring them to, to life on the page. Um, and then a second reason is a more technical one, which is that I think for me, I always try and write books that I would, I would like to read. And for me, I, I love books that are kind of, um, especially with a mystery, which are sort of resolved within itself. So you know that the, the, the mystery and the resolution is all kind of going to be sort of contained within this sort of set cast of characters within this setting. Um, so you're not like when a city where you've got, you know, a thousand people coming and going, it's very easy to, to leave or speak to other people or whatever. These, the, the settings I choose sort of force the characters to interact and they um, have to kind of deal with what's in front of them because there's not a lot of other options um, geographically or in terms of social interaction. So, um, so that sort of, it, it sort of keeps it, um, on a technical level, it keeps it it keeps it sort of contained in a way that um, I just like to see that the the story sort of play out. I love that, and I think it also taps into one of our deepest into some of our deepest fears, right? So in um, in the survivors, there's a scene. I'm not giving too much away where there where a cave starts to you know the water starts to come in when they're in a cave, and I literally felt like, oh my God, I can't, I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, it, one, that's one of my fears is being trapped, you know, underwater and not being able to get air or being stuck in, in the outback and having no water or no food for days. I mean, these are deep primal needs for survival that you're, that you're tapping into and, and, and ratcheting it up with, with brilliance. Um, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, th I think, I, oh, sorry. I, I, I think, yeah, I was just going to say, I think that, um, yeah, I think, th yeah, I, 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 do, I do sort of um, think it really helps. Like, it's really great to kind of have that opportunity to have these environments that do present that sort of natural level of danger, um, where, you know, even if it's not, even if that in itself isn't, you know, a huge plot point, it's kind of, it's always there. And it's sort of, you know, raises the stress levels of the the characters in certain ways, and it's something that they always have to be a bit aware of, and um, and that in itself kind of, you know, um, I, I guess sort of it, it allows you, if nothing else, as a reader, to see a side of the character, you know, how they behave when they're, you know, under a little bit of pressure, or you know, or under a lot of pressure, or, or in a sort of stressful situation. <laughs> exactly, just ratcheting it up mercilessly, Jane Harper. Um, Patty would like to know, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Yeah, were you a, the kid who always dreamed of it or did this come later in life? What's the, what's, give us the, give us the skinny. Yeah, look, I, I always wanted to write a book. I was a, yeah, I was a, like many people, I was like a big reader as a child. And I always thought, um, oh God, yeah, I'd love to write a book one day. And then, um, and then I just never did it. I think, you know, it just seemed like a, a really big task I didn't really know how to start I didn't it didn't even cross my mind that I could kind of make a living out of it so um, I ended up going into after university I went into journalism because I, I enjoyed writing and I that seemed like a, a sort of a, a good opportunity to kind of write professionally and get paid for it while um, and you know and, and I enjoyed it like I, mean, I enjoyed it a lot and it, it taught me a lot not just about like the writing process absolutely like writing deadlines and expressing yourself mm. clearly um on paper but also um one thing that has really helped was um going out and and speaking to people about their experiences and then trying to understand that and then translate that into a story so that other people who haven't had that experience can empathize mm. um that was that has been like a that was a huge huge benefit which I didn't realize at the time but um yeah but in the back of my mind I always thought oh yeah I'd love to write a book one day and then but I always had an excuse you know I was working full-time and that was it really I was working full-time and it just felt too hard you know and um so I and then it, it sort of and the thing that really put me off as well was I think the uncertainty of the rewards because you know you put in all this effort and you really don't know if you're going to get published and I think that really put me off for years and it was only when um I sort of realized that actually I wanted to do this enough that it didn't it didn't matter if I didn't get published I just wanted to do it for me and just sort of write a book that I thought I I would kind of I would personally read myself and I would could be mm -hmm. proud of and I could see and I could learn from it and maybe I could learn from that experience and maybe write a better book in the future that might get published. Um, and it was kind of letting go of that, that those things you can't control and just focusing on the thing I could control, which was finding the time, trying to work on it consistently and writing the kind of book that I felt, you know, um, was the story I wanted to tell. Mm. Um, and then it, it suddenly became a lot easier because I had no pressure. Like it didn't matter if it didn't get published. I didn't expect it to. I, my only goal was really to finish it in a way 
finish it and write it in a way that I, I could be proud of. And um, it was amazing what, how much of a mental difference that made. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it did get published. So, it's, so it just goes to show, like, you never really, you never know, you know, you, you never really know. I mean, maybe, you know, it, you know if, you, if you can just sort of get past that initial fear of what may or may not happen, um, you know, maybe it all will happen, you know? So, um, but you've got to get it down the paper first, which is the, the biggest challenge really. Yes, I love your positivity. And I think that that, that that shift that you got to when you said, you know, I, I don't care if this gets published. I mean, I care, but I just have to get this down. That authenticity, that realness comes through on the page. And of course, not only did Jane's book get published, is she's become a huge number one internationally bestselling book. Her first book, The Dry, now a movie starring Eric Bana. Yum. Um, so just you know, you've gone on to this tremendous success because you had the courage, but that is hard to do. It's scary. It's scary for all of us. I think we have to honor that that's a, that's a risk to put yourself out there and say, here's me, <laughs> I, you know, is yeah. this going to work or not? So. And it is, it's, it's, it is like a big, big job. I mean, and it's, you know, and it, it's, it's, I mean, it could be months or years of your life. And I mean, again, you're probably working full time or you have, or, you know, looking for work or have families or, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be, nobody that was the other thing that um I've spoken about before but I, I kind of managed to let go of was this idea that one day I would suddenly have this like block of time magically this block of time would open up this idea would strike and I'd be sort of I don't know sitting in like a cabin in, in the woods or something you know yes. writing for a couple of months and 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 then I was like when is this ever going to happen it's never going to happen if I'm going to do this it has to be I'm going to have to set my alarm one hour earlier get up and do it before work and I come home and I do one hour and then I go and watch The Bachelor you know it's like it has to be that kind of yeah, you have to fit it in around your like your other stuff. Um, that was like I say it now, and it sounds so. I mean, obviously, but it honestly took me ages to kind of realize that. No, but it's an important shift because, of course, all of us feel very busy. We feel like we have full lives. Nobody's sitting there thinking, "I have so much time, and I just don't know what to do with it." You know, mm, we're busy, yeah. so that's an important shift. Thank you for that. I would um, also say as well, like, sorry, just um, during lockdown, I, I, as well, if you're looking back on the last year and thinking, well, actually, I've had loads of time at home and, you know, my social life's kind of gone to nothing and, um, <laughs> you know, and, and you feel, well, why didn't I write my book then? Don't feel bad about that either because I know, I personally, I know I've spoken to like a lot of people I know who are like authors and things have had real, like real, real trouble like working during lockdown. I think this has been a really stressful year and it's not, it's not a good um, time to kind of be creative and um, I don't know anybody who's kind of flourished in this situation and sat down and written you know, their book or anything it's it's been like I think it's important to acknowledge like the kind of mental pressure this has had as well so um, yeah so you know it's, it's probably actually easier when your normal life is going on you could go out for like drinks with friends and you're not constantly worried all the time so um, don't be too hard on yourself if this year hasn't been your year you know. <laughs> Jane, thank you so much for saying that because I could sort of feel a blaze nationwide keening, moaning, self-flagellating about to happen because so many of yeah. us are thinking, why didn't I learn that language or lose 10 mm -hmm. pounds instead of gain 10 pounds, you know, or, or wrote that book or whatever. But we have, and so thank you for that dose of self-compassion because we have to acknowledge there is a global pandemic going on and it's, that's taking a toll mentally and physically, whether you know, we realize it or not. And, and I, I will admit that I have really struggled with concentration and motivation during the past 10 months. So, so thank you for giving us all grace and giving us permission to give ourselves grace. Yeah, um, no, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah, absolutely been my experience too. So yeah, you definitely, <laughs> no, I don't think any of us are alone in that. <laughs> exactly. We need to take a deep, deep breath into, into giving ourselves grace. Uh, thank you. Um, Jennifer, oh, I love this question. She says, which of your characters do you think is most similar to you? Ooh, Jennifer, love that. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that is a great question. Um, I think, um, oh, so I think it's really important to, I, I do think it's quite important to let the characters be themselves, you know, like, and, 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 and I, I do make quite a conscious effort to think when I'm, you know, thinking about a scene or what's going to happen. This is not about what I would do. This is about mm what they would do you know um and I think it's also um I always try really hard not to fall into that trap where you know sometimes you're reading a book and you can tell when um it's kind of like the author wants to say something so a character kind of just makes this sort of statement or this sort of observation and mm. it, it, it sort of is just a little bit off and you can kind of <laughs> see it being shoehorned in so 
I try, I do try really hard to think, you know, these people are by and large, like they're actually very different from me. You know, they're mm. um, like, I'm not, I'm not like a, a 30 year old dad from Tasmania and I'm certainly not like a 42 year old divorced man from out that Queensland, you know, and I'm not a federal investigator and, um, <laughs> you know, and I'm not lost in the bushland with my corporate retreat, you know, friends and things. So <laughs> it's sort of, so I, I do try and, um, I do really try like not to insert too much myself. I guess inevitably though, a lot of the observations and things that they make, particularly about like the landscape and about, um, I suppose the lives they lead are things that I have, you know, naturally kind of, I guess, observed as part of my research and planning. So um, in a way, in a way that always will weave itself through. Um, and I think also the, I guess the tone of the whole thing as well is sort of quite closely aligns with, um, you know, I suppose what I like to read as a reader and where I like the kind of the moral line to fall in terms of um, how, you know, I, I don't like things to be particularly graphic or particularly violent, just yeah. certainly not for the sake of it. You know, I like it, things to be necessary and, you know, non-gratuitous. And, and so I guess, I guess in terms of that, um, that's sort of probably more where my, myself shines through, I think. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, Sully would like to know, do you find it difficult to write dialogue for your characters who are different from you? Yeah. How do you write a character? I mean, I, one thing I sort of was marveling at is your ability to write men. Because I, I mean, I'm married to a man, but there's still a giant mystery to me. I mean, you see the dishes. Why aren't you doing the dishes? <laughs> like, it's quite confusing. But you, yeah. your men feel real. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I hope so. Like, I, um, so, there's, so there's two things that have, um, Kind of how what so firstly the one thing with the dialogue one thing that's actually really really helped was um it was a journalism years where you're um because I did it in the years of like shorthand and things so I was I, I kind of um literally kind of could kind of go to almost like a bit of a, a zone out sort of thing where I'd just be listening to someone I'd write it down a shorthand and I, I could do it I had quite a good shorthand I could do it sort of verbatim so you're kind of absorbing this thing and you're writing it down and then later you're translating it back into usable quotes mm. that are accurately represent what they said not just even in um you know the to the letter but in the spirit of what they're saying as well so that really helped and that's I think in hindsight that's really helped me sort of hopefully capture the dialogue realistically and then mm. in terms of writing then um you know what I, I sort of try and um I don't I don't sort of spend too long kind of um worrying about you know okay you know what what would a man think about this I think more about with all with them and all the characters it's always about thinking about those universal things that are, are, are true to us all so you know yeah I mean I, I don't really I don't really know what it's like to be a 42 year old divorced cattle farmer in the outback but I do know what it's like to feel um stressed about work and feel lonely and feel like you know you don't maybe have anyone to talk to and um you know what it's like to feel like I mean, maybe not me personally, but like what I can imagine what it's like to feel estranged from your family or feel mm. like the love of your life has got away or, you know, so it's things like that that I think, um, and it's, it's those sort of universal experiences that um, I try and tap into because it doesn't really matter what's causing the stress, whether it's my book deadline or his castle numbers, the, the, the stress reaction is still the same. Mm. So um, that's, that's kind of the more the stuff I, I try and bring out. And you do it so, so well. Um, another question from Dr. Kalady. She said, you lived um, in, briefly in Australia as a child with your family, then returned independently as an adult to continue your journalism career at a regional newspaper in Victoria. What drew you back to Australia? Having lived there myself, I really felt you captured the Australian psyche of the people and the personality of the landscape really well. Tell me what is it that attracts you to using the Australian, using an Australian backdrop? Oh, and sorry, yeah, and, I mean, and can you imagine writing a thriller set in another country or even an urban setting in the future? Yeah, I mean, I definitely can. I think, you know, um, so for me, a big part of it was, um, so I, yeah, I was born in the UK and I lived in Australia as a child and I went back to the UK for kind of like high school and university and my first couple of years as a journalist. Then I came back to Australia and I honestly thought I would, I, I, I honestly thought I would come for like two years and I thought I'll come and I'll, I'll essentially do kind of um, a, a bit like a sort of backpack with you. Like I had a job at a yeah. newspaper, but I thought I'll just use that as a base to go like traveling around and, you know, and, um, and then I'll go, then I'll go back home, you know, back to the UK where my family were and things. Um, and then, you know, and, I, and I used to say that to people when I, I mean, not, maybe not quite as, as bluntly as that, but I used to they say, how long are you here for? I said, oh, a couple of years. And, and particularly the people who had, who had moved over themselves, they kind of used to laugh. 
Um, and they say, oh, yeah, you know, that's what I said, you know, that's what I said 10 years ago as well. No. And I'd laugh and I'd be like, you know, well, because I mean, that was them, that wasn't me. And then fast forward now, like it's been like 12 years and here I am. And I've got, you know, I'm like, I've got an Australian husband and, you know, I live here. My kids are born here. Like, it, yeah, I've, got, I've built a whole career about writing. So I'm, yes, you know, it, it's it's a country as, you know, I think that you know, it's, it sucks you in, it grabs you and it's, hot. it's it, you know, it's got a lot of, wonderful things that make you want to stay I guess um and I think that's what really made me want to write the books about it because I I'd, I'd been away and I came back and I came back when I was 28 and I, I just sort of saw this you know through fresh eyes these fresh adult eyes this kind of this, this landscape and this this mm. culture and yeah people what they're talking about and it was so interesting to me and it was so different from you know like I come from one western English speaking country but this was a completely different feel about and it has its own culture and experiences and I think that that just really drove that home for me um and then just to quickly as the second party question I think absolutely like I would I would always try and hope that I would set the you know, choose the right setting for the book you know if I had a great idea that was you know really wanted like an urban setting um or somewhere else outside Australia like I like to think I would completely explore that and see if um you know and and, and definitely like give that you know some thoughts um because I think it's important to let the best ideas you know rise to the surface I love that I love that but you capture Australia so well and as you said it's such a different different place having lived there myself and having lived in London as well I can say it's it, Australia I mean when you step off the plane there is a vibe a vibrance to it I mean to the outback to the ocean I mean it's just the most ruggedly gorgeous country I've ever seen it's and I it calls me back all the time. So I, 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 I understand why you'd want to set your books there. And, and I love immersing myself in that world. And I think it's sort of like, yeah, even, even with places that maybe um, on the surface has, have a similar um, geographic setting. Um, there's something, you, you know, do it, I mean, everywhere it has their own like kind of sort of unique quirks. I mean, like when they were, like when they were talking about filming the, um, the, the film, The Dry, you know, that was, there was a, a re really early on, there was like a very sort of brief discussion about do we keep it in Australia or do we move to somewhere like say California, which also has bushfire threats and, right. you know, kind of, you know, room, I don't know, like kind of, you, know, you probably felt like, you know, it's kind of small communities and mm. you know, people with, you know, people with their own kind of problems caused by the weather. Um, and yeah, and that, that idea was kind of dismissed like pretty much like straight away by everybody involved, you know, um, and, yeah, it was only really voices to get it, you know, I, I think just to, to kind of get it out of the way really, but um, because, because even though, you know, maybe geographically you could kind of mimic that setting, I think it would have lost a lot of the spirit. Um, and I think that was kind of clear to everybody, maybe for reasons we can't all totally articulate all the time, but it's, it's, there's something just about the vibe that means that, you know, it's, it's, um, that, you know, that, you know, that setting is, is, is where it needs to be. Exactly. Exactly. So where you could move a big little lies to California, you can't move the dry and you wouldn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we are over our time, but we have had so many questions is pouring in and the conversation has been so fantastic that I couldn't cut anybody off. I wanted to get to every single one of our mystery questions, but I have got to respect Jane's time. So I just want to say, Jane Harper, thank you so much for joining us here on Mighty Mysteries. And everybody, you can buy Jane's book out in the US tomorrow. You can buy it today through bookshop.org, our special partner, partnership that supports independent bookstores because tragically one a week has gone out of business around the world since uh, the pandemic descended. So we've got to support our indies so that we have aisles to browse and pay and books to books to hold um, and, and the experience of shopping independent bookstores when, when we come out of this. So buy Jane's book, buy the survivors today through our part partnership with bookshop.org. My partner in crime, pun intended, Kimberly dropped the link in the comments so you can grab it. I know you're going to love it as much as I did. Um, everyone is saying thank you so much. We're getting tons of love over there. Um, Jane, thank you so much. And we will see you next time right here on Mighty Mysteries. Have a great day, everybody.